Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So you might notice here, for those of you that follow my channel, that my hex beam is currently down. Well, that's because I'm gonna be using this post here, this kind of support for another antenna, which I've got in a box to see on the other side of the garden. Now I've been testing out a new way of mounting an antenna here. Now this is just um, a concreted steel post in the ground here which I normally use for my satellite dish but I bought some swagged poles now I'm hoping that it should be okay for the antenna that I want to put up so let's go and have a quick look oh and by the way uh, when I say swagged someone asked me recently it's where uh, they slot into each other so this section slots into that section Quite simple, I'll show you that in more detail in a moment, but let's go have a quick look at the box that we've got. So this is the new antenna. Now in here, it's a Delta Loop made by E Antennas, and I got this from Wimo in Germany, and I'm quite excited to try this. Now apparently it's a 10 stroke 11 meter Delta Loop, but with a tuner, you can get from 20 meters to six meters. Now I've got an external tuner which I'll use, which will be a Chameleon URT1, and I'll put that pretty much at the base of the antenna, just so the coax doesn't radiate. Anyway, let's unbox this and see what we get. So here's all the parts that you get in the box, and the box is quite large, and a lot of it is the packaging that you can see at the top, but you do get some instructions, woo. Okay, so let's just go through each of these parts and get start building. So these are all the parts that we get and well, we get the manual. I don't think it's actually gonna to be too hard to put together, to be honest. We have to build this part first, or at least put these on. It does look like it's gonna be quite easy. You need to get a packing list as well, which obviously is a, a good thing, so you can check to make sure you've got all the parts. And that's how it fits onto the onto the pole, onto the mast. To the mast that I showed you a moment ago, this will go towards the top. Alright, okay, so let's get started. Let's just go through the parts. So this is the this is the plate. Oh, it's quite heavy actually. Very solid. I don't know if you can see that, but it's etched there. EA010081. Let's go through some other parts then. So these hold on the two spreaders. We have to build these onto the plate, probably using this bag of nuts and bolts. We also get a bag of U-bolts, um, an Allen key and even a wrench there. So that's pretty cool. I don't think I'll need that bit until we actually, until we actually uh, put it up in the air or attach it to the mast. Let's, uh, and then we've got a bag of hose clamps. Now this is because the, the V shape part of the antenna, it's, um, it's like telescopic, you know, like an old CB, CB uh, antenna. And they slide in and out of each other. So these hose clamps hold those parts together. These are the cable clamps. Uh, and then we have the matching unit, or ballon, I think they call it. So that's the ballon. Up to one kilowatt. Otherwise we'll go either side of there. Standard SO239, which the coax will plug into. And then looks like we've got some wire in here. And I believe this will be the wire which will go between the two tips of the antenna. Right, okay, let's start putting it together. Now I probably should have started building this outside, as when I started to attach the bottom of the spreaders, I'll need more space. But it's a cold and miserable day out there, so being in the conservatory meant I kept some feeling in my fingertips. Now these green parts are what hold the base of each of those spreaders, you can see how they fit onto the aluminium plate. Each part uses these two long bolts. The plate holes for these bolts are actually threaded, but you do still get a washer and a nut to go on the underside. 
which I'll show you in a moment. Now initially I started tightening up these bolts that secure these green parts without the lower part of the spreaders attached, but when I came to fit them and the ballon, I soon realized that I should have placed those spreaders in between the green clamps first before tightening them up. So I had to undo these again and then place those spreaders in place, just like this. Now I left around one inch and then just nip up the bolts just to hold the spreader elements in place between those green clamps. Now you do get an Allen key with the kit of accessories, which is a nice touch, and you can use this to screw those bolts through those green clamps into the support plate. Now as mentioned earlier, those bolts do go entirely through the support plate, and even though the plate is threaded, you still need to attach those washers and bolts on the underside. Now these nuts are nylon lock nuts, so they'll only go on so far by hand, but using one of the included wrenches, you can tighten these all the way up. Now I'd only recommend doing this once the ballon is fitted, so just remember that if you're gonna build this antenna. Okay, so that's the hub made with the ballon at the bottom and the connection points. It was slightly different to the manual, but I think that's going to be all right. Um, on the underside here, I've also attached the brackets, which we'll use to connect to the pole. But that's how it looks. These are all tightened up. That's all tightened up. But the next step is to attach these elements together using the hose clamps. And then the last bit will be to put the wire across the top to basically make it a, a delta loop. All of these um, aluminium parts, they have a, have a mark here and you only need to go to that mark and then once you've got to that point, you then bring the hose clamp up and tighten it up. And then that section's ready and then you can go up and do the other two sections either side so these are the tips and you can see how the wire is attached now it's a little bit fiddly to do on your own because these are actually under tension well one side is actually okay uh, it's just when you come to do the other side it's uh, kind of under tension and what I mean by that is if you look instead of it being a V it's kind of like uh, like devil horns or bull horns, it's kind of curved, so you kind of have to be a bit careful that it doesn't fling off. But it does it does work. A little strain relief here. It goes through, and the wire is actually marked with a bit of white tape. So if you aim for the white tape to be through this loop here, then the measurements it should all work out right. It should have enough to come down to here to this bolt and then enough to put this in. Just remember to tighten these up and that's it. So I've taken down the aluminium mast, which is around 20 feet long, and then secured the top of the mast to the back of the delta loop plate like this. Now it just slides into the two U-bolts, which are provided, and then on the other side, you just tighten the bolts up. Now I'd like to quickly thank today's video sponsor, and that's JLC PCB. Now, if you do not know who JLC PCB is, well, they're a one-stop shop for everything related to PCB manufacturing at a fraction of the cost compared to others. They're affordable and provide a fast and high quality service. JLC PCB can manufacture one to eight layer PCBs and with a fast lead time of up to just 24 hours, their strict quality control is trusted by over 5.4 million customers around the world. Now, JLC PCB has an in-house production guaranteeing consistent quality for prototypes and large orders. The ordering process is super easy with instant quotes and a very user-friendly platform, which includes real-time tracking of your order. So if you want to DIY your PCBs, JLC PCB is the best choice. Even multi-layer PCBs are incredibly affordable six layer PCBs start at only $35. Now you can also get a $30 coupon for six layer PCBs on their website. That means you can experience high quality multi-layer PCBs for just $5. Now I didn't record me putting it up because it was a bit of a mission and eventually I had to get the help of my son. But here it is. 
the Delta 11, built, installed on the mast, and up at around 20 feet to the base. Now the other antenna you can see to the left is an inverted L N-fed half-wave antenna, which I will use to do an A and B comparison with the Delta loop later. Now as mentioned earlier, I will use a remote tuner with this antenna so that I can try other bands. Now this antenna is supposed to be resonant on 11 and 10 meters, so for anything else I will need the tuner. Now the Chameleon Char URT1 is just connected in line between my radio and the antenna, and it's just left there on the decking like so. Now while I was outside, I connected my VNA to the Delta loop directly without going through the tuner, and on 26 MHz CSWR was 1.4. 26.8 MHz seemed to have the lowest SWR as represented by that dip, and this read as 1.019. At 28.4 MHz, which is near the SSB portion of the 10 meter band, we have an SWR of 1.391, and up at 28.8 MHz, we have an SWR of 1.429. Now, up at 29.6 MHz, which is where we find those FM repeater outputs, we have an SWR of 1.596. So this Delta 11 appears to be quite broadbanded, but how well will it work on the air? Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Quebec Whiskey again? Yes, it's Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. The name here is Matt QSL. Okay, Mike, very good. Good signal here, 5, 9 plus. Over. This is Andrew, American November Delta Radio Echo Whiskey. Yeah, very good afternoon, Andrew. Yeah, you're 5, 9 plus 10. 59 plus 10 dB into the UK this afternoon. I hope you have a lovely afternoon and uh, get some great context there, Andrew. Okay, very good signal as well, Mike. And uh, uh, picking to 10 dB over is 9. Thanks for the contact, 73. Have a nice evening and uh, have a Christmas. Uh, M0DQW, UA3AIF. Yes, yeah, 73, bye bye. This is W1AW. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, M0DQW. Okay, there's a Mike Zero, just a Mike Zero. Yeah, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, M0DQW. Okay, I got it now. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, 4x8, 48. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks very much. You're 5959 into the UK. Name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango, QSL. QSL, Matt, thanks for the report. My name is Joe, Juliet Oscar Echo. My home call sign, November Juliet 1 Papa. Now, the NFED half-wave antenna that I installed does cover 10 meters as well. So let's do an A and B comparison to see if the Delta Loop works any better than the NFED half-wave wire antenna. Everything's written up in the in that just by entering the call sign, uh, and then everything else I write in my sort of paper log, really, um, just for sort of for interest sake, um, and and of course interest memory while they're actually on air. Uh, so yeah, looking back through the log books would be impractical uh, for for handwritten ones. It's it's just not possible. <laughs> Q20 CQ CQ20 nine alpha five whiskey alpha. Nine America five whiskey America CQ twenty over kilo two kilo Oscar looking for the DX radio alpha three Denmark Italy Shirley radio alpha three Denmark Italy Shirley. So that last comparison there was actually 20 meters at 14 megahertz, and surprisingly, the Chameleon Char URT1 remote tuner was able to tune the Delta 11. Now, not surprising though that the NFED half-wave wire antenna was actually noisier on 20 meters than the Delta 11. It also tuned on 80 meters, although at the time of making the video, 80 meters was not active. 
Now I did spend around 30 minutes on each band running FTA with the power of the radio set to 30 watts as I was intrigued to see how well that worked. Now it was early afternoon here in the UK and here the results shown on PSK Reporter of where my FD8 signals were being received using the Delta 11A antenna as a transmitting antenna. Now I was expecting Western Europe and the UK but I was quite surprised to see a couple over the east coast of North America and this is on the 40 meter band. I then tried the same test but on the 30 meter band which is 10 megahertz and to be honest this is a band which I almost never use and to my absolute amazement my little 30 watt FT8 transmissions were being received all the way over in Japan, southern China along with one down in New Zealand and a few on the east coast of the USA. 20 meters was also great, yielding some receptions close to home in Western Europe and then over to Australia and New Zealand. Also a couple of pings right over North America and Alaska. 17 meters didn't disappoint either, east coast of the USA, plenty in Western Europe and even a couple down in Australia. Now 15 meters, just like the other bands, also appeared to work great, considering this antenna is pretty much only resonant on 10 meters and I needed a tuner to get these bands, I think it was working pretty darn well. Now 12 meters, as well as the east coast of the USA, Western Europe, China and Australia, we actually had a few pings down in Brazil. Nice. So 10 meters, well, that just performed exactly how I thought it would literally all four corners of the globe. And to think that I only spent around 20 to 30 minutes on each band, I can only assume that this would greatly improve if I spent longer on the band as conditions change over time. Now the last band that I tested was the six meter band. And while the band was flat as a pancake with literally zero DX, I was able to get a couple of spots from stations in the south of the UK. I was very surprised to see that ping right down there in Cornwall. Now talking of 6 meters, it just so happened that there was a UK 6 meter contest on recently and while I did not participate in the contest, I thought it would be interesting to see who I could hear. And again, using the Char URT1 remote tuner to get the Delta 11 tuned for the 6 meter band. Alpha listening. CQ Golf Zero Sugar Kilo Alpha calling. CQ contest, go for Charlie Lima Alpha, go for Charlie Lima Alpha, go for Charlie Lima Alpha contest. CQ contest, Golf Whiskey 4 Sierra Hotel Foxtrot, Golf Whiskey 4 Sierra Hotel Foxtrot, over. CQ <laughs> contest, Golf 3 Mike Echo Hotel, G3 Mexico, England, Holland, G3 MEH, CQ contest, over. Now I know these tests are not definitive and it all depends on band conditions and the time of day, but for during the day I think it performed quite well on all the bands that I tested. Now even though the EA Delta 11 is primarily tuned for 10 and 11 meters, it still works pretty well with that remote tuner on other bands. And at the time of making this video, the EA Delta 11 costs around 225 euros and you can order this directly from Wimo in Germany who incidentally ship worldwide. Anyway guys, let me know what you think of this particular antenna. I know there's actually some other versions of this antenna available and it's possible that I might try them in the near future. Anyway, let us know down in the comments what you think about it or even if you use one yourself. Also, I'll be interested to know if you use a rotator. Does rotating the Delta 11 or any Delta loop make a difference to any of the signals received as you turn it? Until the next video, take care of yourselves, thanks for watching, thanks again to my members and patrons, and I'll see you guys in the next video.